Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Just Pro Wrestling News Podcast. No filler, no pop-ups. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you, supporting us at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Bradley, this Ooh. is like this is like heavy, heavy fast food, is what this is. Get get a little drink down there. Get Did I show you the boxes? There. This is the boxes that came in. Like this is it's very colorful. Uh, it's eaten, but it's it's so it's fries with burger topping and pieces of burger on it. It's pretty mm. good. Pretty good. Pretty good. I, I like the bun. I like the bun. I like oh the, the bun and the so. On there. Why I also got a burger. <laughs> It, but I think I ended oh, I got up, a burger and then you got a surprise I, I with a burger on it. I ended up buying two burgers accidentally because they're like, oh, put chunks of burger. And they basically put an entire burger on top of the fries. So um, mm-hmm. it's 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 a wonderful meal if you hate yourself. Hi, guys. We're recording. That's just how we're going to start the show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter. This is it's it's the between weeks. This is uh, you're probably listening to this uh, somewhere in between your Christmas gifts. I hope Santa was very nice to you. Uh, and, uh, you didn't get, uh, Xanta Claus down your chimney. Um, and, uh, between that and the New Year's Eve, uh, where I think we're going to watch wrestling again. I don't know. I don't know. Actually, literally as this is broadcasting on the stream, I do believe we will be sitting at the WWE holiday show at, uh, at, uh, what the, what's the arena called again? <laughs> it's been forever since I've been there. Um, the, uh, the WWE show down here in Pittsburgh. Uh, that we'll be attending. So, uh, you know, we're having a good time, I'm sure. Uh, so, but uh, no, I always like to open the door up for anybody who wants to come talk to me in whatever random time that I kind of put on the calendar. Uh, and, uh, and and we have a very special guest. Uh, Bradley is with us. Hi, Sorg. How are you doing? Hi. Thank you. Oh, you're still, I see you, you this week after Christmas, you still have all your decorations up. That's good. I'm glad you're still festive. Well, you, you just have it on for a little bit. You take it off like a little bit after New Year's Day. Yeah, whatever's comfortable, right? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, but I thought I would. I thought I would aim the uh, laptop uh, towards these lights back here and just get a little festive. They slow back. If you look in the right spot, there's a uh, there's the tree right behind me, a little bit right there. Mm-hmm. So this is very this is a very festive uh, show here. I like it. I like it a lot. And it is tis the season, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. So, uh, of course, you know, we did our year ender thing, you know, as you're listening a couple weeks ago and our predictions and things like that. I guess first off, uh, you know, Bradley, now, I don't think we're going to enter this completely in the lore since this is a separate show. But but I would like to give you an opportunity. Like, like, can you tell me? Uh, 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 well, first, what did you learn from 2021 in professional wrestling? I am, at least, I am at least prepared to answer that. Anything else you give me is going to be right off the cuff. But I felt like I learned two things in 2021. And one of them was I learned too much. Hmm. Um, between Dark Side of the Ring... Between some of the stories I heard, uh, there was a Twitter exchange between Jocelyn and Ronnie Starks and a couple of other people, I think Leo Moriarty, about the conditions, let's just say the conditions there were in West Virginia at one point. Mm-hmm. And just how bad it was there. And, and little things that you get, you end up hearing around the area. That if I felt uh, this year it was getting a little bit dark mm-hmm. uh, between things that you were learning about wrestling in the past, things you were learning about wrestling right now. So that was one thing is uh, I felt like I learned too much. Mm-hmm. Of uh, the, the the veil you know, was lifted a little too much for you. Is this is this a symptom of just like? Do you think this is a symptom of like where wrestling's at right now, or is this a symptom of you've been paying attention for so long, you're 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 close enough to it and seeing the right places, like you know, let's say you know a Twitter exchange like that or or, or things like that. 
I don't think it's fair to say that it's the, completely the state of wrestling right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, what what you see here on the what dark side of the ring is stuff that happened in the '80s and the '90s. So you know, you have to be careful with this. And I'm sure people have ran into this before, where you hear a bunch of bad things at once, and you think everything's bad right now, and you think about things and like, wait a minute, a lot of hurt heard happened decades ago so you can't yeah. it's not fair to say well, oh it's all bad right now it, and 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 sometimes they spin like i know when they, we saw the plane ride from hell episode of dark side of the ring they m- talked about mm-hmm. how that was kind of a catalyst for <clears throat> things happening in wwe that they don't allow yeah. things like that to happen anymore right and and guys like john cena like look at that as a sample of how not to behave uh, to be a part of this kind of situation, and honestly, I think you know between your your Dwayne Johnsons and John Cena's and Batista's that stay away from the kind of crap that 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 you know half those people in that plane got involved in, like that's only probably helped their career as, as they well, go outside we, of wrestling. What we know for now, yeah, yeah, there might be things we learned later. No, but that these guys are on such a pedestal. This is the this is the thing. Yeah. I've always said this about John Cena. If it ever came out that John Cena did steroids, it would be ruined, right? Because this guy has been so adamant and about I am, cl- you know, clean living, this, you know, and 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 natural in his in his conditioning, right? Um, I don't know now. He's in movies. He might be doing some, you know, look stuff. You know, I, I, I you know, Rock is would be a question mark too right now when you look at some of those workout videos. Holy crap! Or maybe that's just what happens when you're not on the road. Uh, uh, six days a week, right? But uh, but I I just feel like if something really 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 shitty was gonna happen with John Cena, like it would have come out by now all this time, right? Like like I, you can't. I, I don't know if I would agree if uh, steroids would be the thing that would bring him down. It would disappoint some people. Oh yeah, it would yeah. Bring him, the bring down is uh, some wo- you know a woman coming out saying, "Hey, John Cena assaulted me," and the next thing you know. Five, ten people come out and say, "Finally, somebody said something." Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, that's the kind of things that bring somebody down. Uh, steroid use would disappoint somebody, but my <laughs> little opinion. We care. We care uh, less about steroids these days than other things. They're obviously more important, but yeah, I, I think so. Mm-hmm. I think so. But yeah, I think that. I mean, so so there's that positivity in this. Uh, so okay, all right. I can't. Did you have a prediction for for this past year when we talked a year ago? I can't. I can't recall. It wasn't in our notes, but I didn't know if you had anything you may if recall. If I was really good, I would have gone back and figured out what my prediction was. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I don't know what it was. That's all um, right. I'm kind of asking you on the fly. I realize that. I predicted that PB Smooth would be Rise Champion by the end of the year. No, you did not. I uh, I said that uh, Keith Hot would get another tag team championship under his belt. I didn't say which one. Okay, which okay, one. okay. Yeah, because he's but, been tag champion in a couple yeah. of promotions, right? So that makes sense. Um, I I predicted that Rise uh, would end with uh, um, Edric Everhart screaming. I wasn't very. Specific, <laughs> Is that how that ended? I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't watched the show yet. Is that how that ended? <laughs> it didn't end that way, but it, uh, at least the first half ended that. Okay. Way. Okay. Edric Everhart is just, I, I want to go over a couple of things that I'll probably go over in my, I like to make a little post over here in review. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one of the things I wanted, I was going to talk about is character characters. I really appreciated in uh, 2021. One of them was Edric Everhart. I love that character. He did. I wish we would have, I mean, some things cause circumstances to, give us at least one event less than we should have had. But I love this guy that came out and had an opinion that let's just for the heck of it in my own mind, we'll say he knew it was wrong and he didn't want to share it. So he just sits there and says, phew a lot and just tells Matt Connor, don't show up Mm -hmm. and puts this facade, not, not me on Ninja facade, facade on like i'm cool and calm and collected i just don't like this guy whatever and then at the end when he finally loses his match with connor he can't hold it back anymore he can't all of a sudden um you ever seen that one meme the drawing of the guy with the happy face 
over his face, but behind you see his eyes tearing and everything. Mm -hmm. um, that was Edric. And it came out when Edric lost his match and him just at the absolute top of his lungs screaming, I hate you, Matt Connor. I hate you. I hate you. Was uh, one of the best of come up, uh, comeuppance I've seen. Um, I really liked that. Excellent. Excellent. I think I, I think I got us off topic just a touch. No, 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 no. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> we're here to we're here to bob and weave the topic a little bit. Um, yeah. So so, what are you looking forward in twenty twenty two? What's your prediction? That we we just just had a bunch of them on the show uh, as you as you guys are watching yeah. this uh, or listening to this a couple weeks ago. But what's your hot take for twenty twenty two? You can give a couple of them if you want. Hot takes for twenty twenty two, right off the cuff. I didn't get no chance to think about it and think about it. Um, I'll tell you what, let's you and I both predict Roman Reigns. So each of us will say, first off, is Roman losing the title? Uh, I and think second eventually. off, yes, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were asking me. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're each of us will it's each of us will answer two questions one, is Roman Reigns losing the title? And two, who is he losing it to? And if you feel like when it's going to happen, I say yes to. Who are we gunning for? Where are we at? Where are we at? I don't even know who's on SmackDown right now. So I, I honestly, I have no. I'm so I'm so detached from WWE product. I can't tell you even like reading the tea leaves. I, I have a feeling it's just going to be Brock Lesnar, and that's just going to be it. You think it'll happen on when? Eh, first Mania. If it happens, it'll be mania. mania. Yeah, yeah. I think nothing right. less than mania. I will agree with you on question one that I think he will lose it. Uh, I think the story is start just starting to lose its uh, strength. It was stronger mid last year than it is right now. Uh, it's still strong. Uh, I'm still looking forward to what happens between him and Brock. Um, if they have a match on the first, I don't see them having a match at WrestleMania. No, it may just roll into the Rumble, actually. It could roll into the Rumble. But to choose somebody, and I've watched a little bit more SmackDown than you did. Mm -hmm. um, right now, one of the storylines is Drew McIntyre. The they, they kept Drew McIntyre out of the battle royal to see who the next top contender is going to be and there's a little controversy on that so i don't think it's going to be the rock i've, I've heard some people say that wrestling is the rock but um i'm just going to hot take it and say it's going to be drew mcintyre drew mcintyre is going to beat roman reigns yeah it's a new matchup it's a brand new matchup absolutely um, hopefully they don't have them have a match before WrestleMania, but, uh, you know, that, that would be a good story to say, uh, Roman Reigns is trying and they're, they're screwing him over and then wrestle and then Royal Rumble happens and he wins the Royal Rumble again. That's not unprecedented to win the Royal Rumble more than once or, um, who won it last year? It wasn't the year last year was, yeah, it was last year. Last year was Rome, uh, uh, Drew won it. Who won it this year? That doesn't matter. It, it was a year <laughs> apart. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to say Drew McIntyre WrestleMania beats Roman. Okay. Okay. I see it. I think I think it's a big WrestleMania moment. It should be a big moment for a big stage. Who had the biggest? Who had the biggest kind of come up this year? Do you think? Come up? Yeah. Like Bianca, I think is the biggest, the biggest new star that was built this year out of WWE. Like someone that came that wasn't in the main Met roster and then came into the main roster. Well, we even just arrived, you know, just kind of like they got. Yeah, you know, you could say the same about Big E, I suppose, too. But I think Bianca was the most, uh, <clears throat> was the biggest jump, right, from nothing to uh, uh, champion. Yeah. I, I can't dispute that. Uh, I hope that they give Bianca and Rhea Ripley a better chance this year than 2022, better than they did in 2021, to be big stars. Mm -hmm. uh, 
this whole thing um i don't even know what rhea ripley's doing right now so there's some uh thing about her and uh nikki ash uh some tag team i mean they're not they're not fighting with each other but nikki ash is feeling doubt in herself and that's supposed to go somewhere and that's all that they're doing with rhea ripley right now Mm -hmm. versus uh uh, Bianca might is about to end her feud with the uh, Dew Draw. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's start doing some bigger things with these women and start getting some bigger uh, matches going on and building these people up so that uh, I, I would like to see Rhea Ripley take the title from Charlotte at WrestleMania. Oh, absolutely. Maybe that's the. Maybe Rhea finally wins the Royal Rumble and takes on Charlotte and mm-hmm. undoes years of damage that Charlotte and the WWE did to her. That that would be good. They they, they bring it back around eventually. Everybody, they, they, I, I think I think they're setting up that everybody that had like the title when there was no crowd. We maybe we're setting up for a lot of them to get another chances at the title and see if it's as booked, mm-hmm. uh, you know it's as good in front of the crowd as it was then. You know, because I mean, it's kind of like a mulligan on those kinds of things. So, uh, but it's interesting. It's interesting. So, but no, no, forget that. No, that matters. Let's list everyone who's going to win the twenty four seven title. Let's just go through. <laughs> hey. Come on. Um. Uh. Let's say both. Let's say uh both members of uh what's that the two Spanish guys um uh, uh Angel Garza and the other guy and, and uh, Umberto. Umberto. Yeah, so, so so each of those guys will win it. Um, maybe Titus will finally win it. Uh, oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> this is what we're spending the next thirty minutes on, Sorg. Well, we 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 I think we we placated the people that come here for wrestling talk. I want to do something oh. different. You know me. I what have I told yeah. you? I don't like doing straight interviews. I don't like doing straight podcasts about wrestling. I want to do something interesting. Okay. So well, I'll tell you some sort. I'll tell you if you want to do something. If you think I'm going to go along, I'll tell you. There's a small chance. <laughs> Where did you get a chance profit action figure? What is this? So uh, vicious outcast wrestling. Oh, I remember them. Uh, what year? What year was this? I'm going to take a wild guess and say it's two, uh, 2015, 16, 17, maybe. And uh, there was a event in West Virginia. And Chance Prophet was selling these, and I may, had to make sure I had one. So no matter what, what the odds are, I always have a small chance. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it, too. So, w- w- well, we got you. And we don't have Matt Carlins to defend himself in this. But we were talking a little bit okay. beforehand. Because I know the thing throughout the year was you and Matt, First, explain what the deal is with you and Matt. I've been talking about booking your own shows, which I think has become, are you booking a rival show against Matt's show? And, you know, I, and I forget where this guy, this, this is like a tax refund show or something, right? Which is, for those that don't know, the idea that around tax refund season, all these like uh, bullshit little indie promotions keep popping up, you know, in April, May, because uh, they like, you know, hey, you get a big chunk of change, you're going to start a wrestling company right and pay all the fees and losing your money on that uh and then they go away in a few months when they realize oh no this is hard and i lost all my money already um you know so so it, 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 that was that was kind of the origin of like what if we did our own tax you know season show or something wasn't it well matt and i were going to put our stimulus uh, checks together. oh the stimmy shows that's right it was stimmy championship wrestling is what we were putting together that's right uh so um I have full confidence in Matt, and uh, you know the, we have to work together to make a good show. You know, and we can't we can't go. Run, I run my show; he runs his. He's got all of his. Uh, you know, he he's got his, uh, He knows how to get this show advertised. He knows television. He can get this on CBS, like eight o'clock on CBS on Saturday night. So he's got the connections. He can do that. Uh, I'm the money guy, of course. I'm going to make sure we get enough money and get the money to so get our semi checks to get us on CBS at eight o'clock on Saturday night and run our wrestling show. Excellent. So, so you're here. 
let's say you got let's say there's an air stimmy check whatever you know you had your stimmy yeah. check battle hold i don't know how much wrestling show you're doing for a stimmy well, check. we held on to it you held and, on to uh, it w- w- it's been and a then, really... and then we have tax re- two years of tax returns and, and, and you've been putting it into bitcoin right so yeah so uh, you know you're all good there um hold on so there's a situation out front of the studio i'm making sure it's not not a huge problem um but anyways uh yes but anyway is so so <laughs> what would you book if i had to put you on the place what would you book for your stimmy stimmy thing on your own here let's say you're doing your rival show against man carlin's on his uh it, like where would you start i'm really interested in the, where your mind would go with this like First show. You don't have to do like well, book the year or anything. Like, what, what is what is the debut of Bradley Championship Wrestling going to look like? And is that the name? Well, that if if I had to compete against Matt, um, I don't know if I would be able to put on a better show because I would be up against Matt's son. You know, Matt's son would do the booking for Matt. So Matt, if it's me versus Matt's son, I, I'll tell you right now. I can't. I I've seen how he books. I can't, I can't uh, compare to him. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. But but, but, but try, but try. Well, I guess we could try. So my idea for Bradley, this would be Bradley Championship Wrestling, which I've been talking about because uh, um, through another promoter recently, I was able to get uh, a large amount of uh, equipment. Uh, you know, he had everything. He was selling it online. It was, that, that's great. He had a, a ring. He had entrance and mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. all kinds of things. Um, and yeah, he had a frog machine. Now, I don't know how I'm going to put a frog machine into a wrestling show. No, I don't either. No, I don't even know what happens when you turn the frog machine on. I'm afraid of what's going to happen. When you turn the frog machine, on. I'm sure it's a toad looking good time. I I don't want to jump to conclusions on what the frog machine does, or hop to conclusions, or hop to conclusions. Um, this is painful. But <laughs> if I okay, so I'm booking for Bradley Championship Wrestling. Yes. Uh, so my idea is, you know, you need a champion, right? Mm-hmm. You need a champion, and you need to establish that. And I think I think you need to establish that quick. So the first match will be announced. The first match is for the Bradley Cha- Heavyweight Championship, and you bring out two wrestlers. Let's bring out uh, Chest Flexor versus Calvin Couture. Okay. Okay. And that match will be for the Bradley Heavyweight Championship. The Bradley Heavyweight Championship. In the first the Bradley match. Bradley Heavyweight Championship. First match. Well, you got to establish a champion, and then after that, then you can have people saying, oh, that looks important. I think we, I should go after the Bradley Heavyweight Championship, too. Okay. Point, it'll be the, the most important championship they have. We'll have a match, and all test flexor win. Bradley Heavyweight Champion. We have a little celebration about that. Okay. Is there confetti? Is there anything? Else? The, Is there enough in the in the um, in the bro- in the budget for confetti? I know wrestling fans will bring their own streamers. So, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, okay. We got to budget this. So this is why, why should I pay for stuff? Streamers encouraged. I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. If, why? Why should I pay for it if I can get the fans to be stupid enough to pay for it? So what the hell? Oh, you know? Spoken like a true promoter, uh, I suppose. Absolutely. So we'll have a second match. And they come out and say, this next match is for the Bradley Heavyweight Championship. Wait, what? And uh, this next match will be Jack Pollock versus Tony Johnson. And the two of them face each other, they have a good match, and Jack Pollock wins. Now, Bra- Jack Pollock is the Bradley heavyweight champion. And we have another uh, uh, celebration, and uh, more streamers, and everyone's happy, and then Jack Pollock Paul goes back. And then we have our next match. And our next match is for the Bradley heavyweight championship. I'm sensing a trend. 
This match will be Matt Carnard versus PB Smooth. And the two of them face each other. And Matt Carnard wins. And Matt Carnard's the Bradley Hennig champion. And we have streamers. Um, it's just basically a whole night. Every night is the main, every match is the main event. Every match is for the Bradley Heavyweight Championship. That's a that's a that's a good that's a good philosophy. Wait, is, wait, is everybody getting a different belt, or is it the same belt every time? I I think we could use the same belt. You know, chest flexor goes back and just says, "Hey guys, here you go. You, I know you need this." And then they go have okay. the match for the Bradley Heavyweight Championship. Okay. Okay. All right. So. So now you're going to have six, seven, I don't know. Well, I don't know. You're a first-time promoter, so probably 11 champions at this point after the end of the night, okay? No. No? No. 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 It's, I mean, once the match is over, uh, we need to establish a new Bradley Heavyweight champion. Oh. Uh, oh, okay. Wait, is this like, is this like every kid? This is a- WWE. Nobody remembers anything. Is it? <laughs> oh. Oh, is your audience Goldfish? <laughs> is that what we're doing? Here? I mean, this is WWE. They, they, they do this all the time. They have they have storylines that end nowhere mm-hmm. and just go on to something else. Mm-hmm. So that's a this, this is a this is a wrestling event for people with very short attention spans. Just at at the, at the end of the, the match that happened, you just sit there and say, "Well, oh, that's good." Um, so who's going to be Bradley Heavyweight Champion? Oh, we need another, we'll have another match. For the Bradley Heavyweight Championship, and that's the, the here we go for Bradley Heavyweight Championship match. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So, is this what happens at the second show too? Is that just what we do? I don't see how you could go wrong if every match is the main event. Okay, it's just going to be a night of a bunch of really good matches. Okay, I see that. I see that. I get that. Okay. Uh, the the championship should hold its importance because it's a it's important. It's a Bradley Henry championship. Everybody should want it. So everybody gets a chance at it. Everybody's everybody gets a chance to win it. Everybody gets a chance to hold it. And it's going to be very prestigious after all this. I'm confident in this plan. You're confident in this plan. Okay. Yes. I okay. I have, uh, having attended uh, probably thousands of wrestling shows at this point, um, I think you have too, uh, I, I, what, don't you think the audience is going to get tired by the end of this? Is it, is it too much? Bradley, are you overselling this? And will they run out of streamers? It's like you're going to say, <laughs> it's like you're going to say, are they going to get tired of a bunch of really good matches? Are they going to get tired of really good wrestling? No, wrestling fans are, if you give them really good wrestling, they're not going to be tired of it. They, they might get a little tired of the match, but it's like you're tired of like, oh, this is a really great night. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, my gosh. You know, that, that, that's fine. I, have, I see no problem with that. Okay. 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 I dig, I dig it. I dig it. So Bradley Championship Wrestling, uh, which yes. will be booked. Uh, do you want me to book you in the, uh, the the parking lot across the street like we did that one time? That's a good place. That's a good place. Um, That's a good place. I, good I, have a, I have a backyard. You have a backyard? Oh, perfect. 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 And uh, nobody's... I mean, I mean there's other neighbors around here, and uh, I'd have to talk to them to Oh, say... that's your porch behind you. I thought you had just had a really deep living room for some reason. No, that's my porch. I was like, "Wow, Bradley is palatial." Yeah. Uh, and a, oh, oh, is he giving me the tour now? Where, where is he going? Okay, now he's going. He's sliding open the do- this, the door. He's outside. This is the part where he locks himself out, right? He is outside. Bradley is outside the Bradley Dome. The Bradley Dome. I've called it the Bradley Dome since he's been gone. Uh, yes, yes. So, so that he's putting he's putting earphones back on. Play by play for your audio guys. Uh, so so thank you for showing us the the Bradley Dome. I can't wait for somebody to take a dive off of that porch. Well, I think it's perfect for Joe Dombrowski. For what what to take a dive? What, for or for No, no, he's gonna he, he can watch all the wrestling from up there and then you'll 
and commentate on. There you go. Okay, so Joe Dombrowski, who's uh, who's his second on uh, commentary? Uh, I just met Doc, so let's let's put Doc in there. <laughs> I don't know if you're like the last guy I met. <laughs> 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 oh, hey, anything to keep BC Steel from my house. That's fine. That is true. That is true. So, all right. So, Bradley Champ Wrestling happened at the Bradley Dunn, uh, hopefully this summer, because I don't want to do another show where I'm freezing my ass off. Uh, so, <laughs> no, I agree with that. I've had too many of those. We'll, pro- we'll probably do it on like a Tuesday. Yes, yes. Tuesday uh, afternoon. Between, between uh, um, uh, a football field in late September in Chicago. And uh, a venue that has not kicked the heat on yet for their first time event in the middle of uh, what was that late? I guess late November. Uh, so mm. that was not okay. Not okay. Uh, I'll take the sweat. Oh, by the way, we're doing construction. You can't have your wrestling in that. Go away. That has happened like twice now. I think <laughs> so. The people did it like, happen geez. another time? Well, no. You know, I, I think somebody it. else got double booked. Was the thing. Yeah, but that is. Um, I don't know. I just, I just wish. I just wish venues wouldn't take treat the pro wrestling like second class citizens, did, especially when it's promotions you, that have been there for like a while, right? Did you uh, hear uh, Greek Town got canceled? Greek Town. Oh, Greek Town Wrestling. They're up in Canada. Chan- or did yeah, uh, I think okay. it's in Canada. Uh, Channing Decker's uh, thing. Yeah, Channing Decker made just just today within the last few hours made a, a video announcement very quick that one sucks. he was like I, I wish this was going to be a promo against eric young but uh the university canceled the event i think i think it sounds like because of covid concerns understandable understandable that that's what that's happened to um i think it was conquest about a year ago was uh trying to do um one of their first shows back and it was going to be in a field and it was going mm-hmm. to be like it was like a, you know field in August I think and uh, or September maybe and like again it was a city you know thing and there was enough kind of flashback on it when things were you know things were getting uh, pretty big so I mean understandable things are going to happen unfortunately uh, so but uh, but you know everybody regardless of, regardless if you're if you're putting on a wrestling show if you're attending a wrestling show please everybody take care of yourselves um, you know if you don't feel comfortable doing that I think that still applies. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable attending an event because you're not sure, I think it's it's fair to ask if, uh, you know, it, what the protocols are expected to be and everything like that. Uh, but also be ready for people that don't comply and, and you know, maybe you, you kind of sit in the back uh, with, with your mask on or something away from the crowd, you know. so Please, that's please, please get vaccinated. Absolutely. Get your backs, get your boosters and whatever to take care of yourself. And, uh, and if not, you know, this, you know, you, you don't have to go to the wrestling shows, you know, that's the other thing. Mm -hmm. Please support these guys, but there's also other ways to support them in a lot of cases too. So, um, that's, you know, support, support the, the wrestling is important, but, but your health is first and foremost, of course. So, uh, so Bradley, I think, uh, Bradley, thank you so much for joining me, uh, here and and just shooting the shit with me for a little bit. Well, Well, sure. Um, Actually, uh, let's go back because you asked me what I learned. I said it was two things. I didn't oh, get, oh. I didn't, uh, yeah, that will be a good closer. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to make this as little about me and more about the subject as possible. Um, but I had a similar situation to many folks that got let go from WWE this year. Uh, very similar situation where. Uh, somebody tells you you're fine, everything's fine, and you're good, and then suddenly out of the blue say, oh, by the way, we have to let you go. And uh, right when I was let go, it was at the uh, beginning of November, uh, I heard some other WWE, and, and uh, some of them were very vocal. I think uh, Taya Valkyrie, Frankie Monet, went on was very specific was what she was she was a specific not about people but about people's coming to her and just lying and it gave a little more perspective to uh what they go through you go through you know now you're at home sitting by yourself and you know the, the reason it's hard to get that out of your head mm-hmm 
And that's what these wrestlers went through. It's like somebody just, you know, cutting them right at the knees. Uh, some, of, some of them very talented. And, you know, just that, what they go through, uh, you know, uh, I learned the hard way what, what that's like. Mm-hmm. And I feel for him a little bit more, but I'll be fine. I'll be okay. I'm I'm getting lots of interviews. I'm fine. Good, good. And and, but, that, and as it is, a lot of our friends in the business that have been dealing with this, um, I I really think a lot of them are land on their feet. So like, I don't think mm-hmm. it's plenty of good spots out there still. Plenty of opportunities, you know. Um, and that's maybe a different shape than people thought. I uh, you know uh, you know a few months ago at the beginning of the year. But uh, but no, good to see good to see um, a lot of these guys doing some really great things. It's made honestly, it's 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 you know for all the the suck of it, I think it's made uh, wrestling a lot more interesting in the long run too. So it's really shaking things up more than the. I year. think so. We, more, we might get to see more uh, big stars mm-hmm. at our uh, wrestling events. By the way, my sister when when this happens, my sister goes to me and says. One of these wrestling organizations there, there, they must need an accountant. Why don't you go do an accountant? And I was like, well, yeah, I don't know if you know much about the budgets of these places, but yeah, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? So, I don't think I'm going to get a huge salary doing no, uh, accounting no, no, for Rise Wrestling. No, 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 no. So, no, 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 no. well, no, these are big, Bradley. These are big so, superstar organizations. So, of course, you will. I mean, look. Oh all, yeah, well, I mean, maybe I should you gotta, talk to Brandon. You gotta have a lot of money to have the confidence to walk around in the uh, in the in the wardrobe that BC still does, right? You know, I, I haven't talked to Brandon about this. I, I've been sucking up to him all year. Oh, that's what I hear. That's what I hear on the and, sheets. Uh, yeah. Um, so, Brandon, hey, um, you know who's doing your accounting? I've I've done this for 23 years. I know about cash forecasting and budgeting and expenses. Um, why don't you, you know, let's 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 just talk. You know, let's just take a look at your books, see what we got, and maybe there's some things I can do for you. Uh, you know, let's you and I make Rise Wrestling as great as it can. Oh, I was really worried of the phrase you're going to use there. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> what, what what did you think I was going to say? Rise wrestling as great as you can. So rise wrestling as great as you can. Rag, as, we, as we can. Rag, we we rag, rag, rag house. Rag house. Let's let's rag house. Did I get that right? We don't we don't need a mnemonic on this. Well, well then, how are you going to put it on a hat? That's what you do with these things, right? No, I don't. This is not a. This is just me trying to get a job. I don't want to. You don't have to. I haven't worn a hat to these wrestling to these uh, interviews. I could have a hat. You could have a hat. Hire Bradley. Hire Bradley. <laughs> hey, hashtag hashtag hire hire Bradley. Uh, it worked out there so well for hashtag book Zeke. So I I'd say, oh, I'd yeah, say yeah, we got yeah. something there, right? So no, looking forward to it. Bradley, thank you so much. Heal Bradley on the tweets, and uh, thank uh, thank you for playing along. We've had a lot of fun with you this year and la- over the last few years. Thank you for being a part of this, and thank you for your contributions to the show, uh, both via Patreon and through content as well. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. And thank you. This should be, I believe, the last piece of content we're going to be putting out in 2021. Everybody, I hope you've had a good Christmas, and please have a happy and safe New Year. And hope you see. And no buts. And no buts. And no buts. No says buts. Bradley. The last thing I want, I've said, I, I've put, I've been manager all year, right? Is that correct? What's that? I have I not been manager all year. You, I think you have. Yeah, actually. Okay. Most well, consistent. So, so then I get to say the last thing on the last show of the year. All right. Send them out, Bradley. No buts. No more buts. 2022, no buts. No more buts. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.